Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office teardown lab. I'm actually standing up today and that's because I've got a lot of big boxiness here. You can just, you, well, I'm going to show you. How about that? I'm going to show you. I'm going to pop the camera out a bit as I've got to lift this heavy crate. Virtually a crate. There you go. Car multimedia. Yes, pretty nondescript box actually. doesn't say anything on it. No part numbers, no nothing. Just an empty empty it's not empty it's just, as i said empty of print void of print it's a car multimedia system and yes this is my ongoing quest for upgrading a radio and you've seen me fix the old radio and slave over that and then i've sort of decided nah it's all bollocks anyway i'm going to just get an android <laughs> because at the end of the day who doesn't want an android in your car and especially if it integrates fully with the steering and that's what this unit does and this is the sort of basic manual but frankly who cares about this stuff we know we're not going to read the manual anyway when we fit this we're just going to jam it in um so we'll just have a look at see what you get in the bag Urgh. so first things first you got your cable set so going through the cables this is a converter cable clearly from a bmw style locking connector to the old bmw style connector so that's just a harness adapter we're probably not going to use that You've got some AV cables. So these are your line-ins and line-outs. Two sets of line-outs, I believe, is traditional. One set of line-in for your reverse camera. So that's for your screens in the back and your camera from your reverse camera. What's this? This is like your triggers. There's again another reverse camera. So yeah, maybe I'm not quite sure on that one. You've got another green reverse wire trigger. Illumination. Amp and antenna, con, ground, switch one, brake. Oh, there's a lot to put on here. Accessory, camera power, some other switch, and battery. So more stuff there. USB extension. Of course, you're going to get loads of USBs on this thing, being a tablet. A microphone, that's what that is, a microphone on a wire, I can't be able to get it out. Metal brackets. Get all that back in. Now, this is the problem in certain vehicles, like this vehicle. To get the dash out is a pain in the knob end. So to actually get everything connected in one sitting is going to be tricky. So I'm not going to try, because it's going to be so demoralising to hook up everything. There's your GPS antenna, and there's your Wi-Fi antenna right there. Um, it's going to be demoralising because it, I would need so many cables, so many, you know, so much pre-planned thought that it's it's going to stress me out. So I'm just going to fit the thing in its most basic way. Ooh, this is another microphone. So I opted for a second type of external mic in case that first simple one wasn't good enough. So this is a more interesting one, omnidirectional. The unit itself actually has a mic even built in, so you might not even need any external mic whatsoever. So it's just belt and braces. This is a, basically it's the same technology as a webcam, but because it's an Android unit, it's your front facing DVR camera. So we'll definitely install that this time because there's not too much trickiness involved. You do have other options like DVB um, tuners, D, you know, digital radio, digital uh, TV. Uh, I'll show you what I've done with that. because I, There's a bit of serendipity. Dipity, dipity. I'll show you what's with that. And this is the unit itself. Just remove the foam packaging. I'm just going to put the box away because you never know when you're going to need that box. There's a lot to go wrong here. Hopefully not wrong from user error. Now, in the vehicle this is going in, I'm not sure entirely convinced that that face here is the right curve. Um, it'll fit, but it might not fit well. So that's kind of a, a risk I'm taking, but versus the old factory installation, I think this is going to be a lot better. So on the front, you've just got Android configured buttons. So you've got power. This thing is a hotkey to bring up your Google Maps. I think if you hit it twice, it brings up something else. Can't remember what. Home, back, radio presets, play eject for your dvd now that's your, for your kids watching dvds interesting enough you're thinking why are you watching dvds when you've got uh, you've got a map sd card but you've also got movies sd card 
Um, I don't know, I think DVDs are probably still easier for people with kids because you can pick them up at car boot sales and just chuck them in and they work, don't they? Not much thought required. But I will check because some of these things, when you put like the DVD in or you play certain things, it can play on the video out but not affect the screen. So you can still watch your show and, um, and your kids in the back can watch their, their nonsense. So hopefully that will work. Um, but if not, I'm not bothered. I, would, I wasn't expecting it to, but that's something I've just read as a sort of a, by the way, this might do that. So you've got your connectors on the back, but on the top you've got your diagram here. So you've got your 40 pin um, BMW Land Rover of a certain era type connector there. Then you've got the 60p socket. So the 40 is just basically all of the speakers, because it's got an amplifier, of course, and there and you've got an amplifier connection so that can actually turn on your external amplifier if you want that to be switched by this unit and then you've got this other small socket here with these 60 pins and that's your AVIO your reverse switching stuff for various statuses on the unit your external mic your it says SIM and DAB I'm not sure what the SIM is DAB plus WINTS interesting and your external TV tuner now what is interesting about this is that I didn't opt to get the TV tuner and all that stuff because it's, it's kind of a nonsense. We have the TV tuner in the existing one and you don't really use it. But uh, I tried this thing out on Android and this does work. If you recall one of my earlier videos on the uh, digital um, DVB tuner, that does work. So I can plug this in here. So I might just fit this as a matter of course, just plug that in. And you can get glass mounted antennas for it. But I might just put the wire on it somewhere just to see if it kind of works a bit. And if it does work a bit, that's something to upgrade in the future. So it's easy to try. Or I'll pull the USB out to somewhere more accessible. But you can try all your gadgets, basically. And I've got another bag just off to the camera. And I'm just going to pop out its contents. Now, this was crazy expensive. So the radio itself was nearly 300 quid. And this wire alone was about 60. And the reason you need this wire, if you've got the model of BMW or Land Rover which has an external amplifier, so that's the DSP unit in the back. And if you pull the trunk panel, you see that big ass box that's always failing, that's the DSP unit. The cables for the radio don't actually terminate at the radio in that, those models. The, te the cables for the radio are actually in the boot. So you need this, which is basically a massive extension lead. So I'm going to open that up to show you. So it, take, it plugs into the radio at the front here. You can see it's even got a splitter for it. And then that goes to your boot. And then you hook up all the connections in the boot where your sat nav and all of that stuff lives. So it's a, basically a six meter long extension. So that's going to be some fun routing that. I suspect that's going to be most of the work installing this radio is getting this wire in from the front to the back and while you're at it if you're doing that you'll want one of these so this is an FM to Fakra so again BMWs and certain range Land Rovers use Fakra which is that weird connector like that and that's the traditional radio connector that you're all used to so you need uh, an equally long six meter long however long that is extension to go to the antennas that are now living in the back of the car but once you're done I mean that's going to be not so bad in fact I'm looking here did you notice among any of that an actual antenna connector because I'm going to say I didn't so there's your GPS and your Wi-Fi So I'm not sure, you might have to chop some it like. Let's have a look here. 10 ant and amp con. Sure, I don't know actually where does the antenna hook in. Hmm. Have I done myself oh a disservice? No, there it is. I think is that the antenna? Yeah, so maybe I've got it to, I've got some of it here, but not all of it, because how do you plug in that to that? Unless there's something, there might be something in the loom, perhaps. I don't know now. I'd be very confused. Was that itself an, an adapter? Yeah. So be careful anyway. I might have got it wrong there a little bit. I might have uh, been sent the wrong thing. I kind of felt that you'd have some sort of connector a bit like this on both ends. But again, until I dig in there, I'm not quite sure. But 
be aware of it yourself. So there's your standard sort of BMW type connector and there's your USBs, you've got four of them. So make sure if you're fitting this, you get a few USB extensions because unless you can get to this easily, you'll want to pull them out to the sort of dash. Remember there's some sort of services you can get with mobile phones these days that if they hook up to a head unit like this, then you'll get some extra goodness. So what I might try to do though, because I don't think I'm going to do a fitting video as such on this, maybe a little lightweight one. The reason is it's it's one of those sort of tedious jobs, isn't it? When you're trying to fit something complicated and you really need two hands and you don't really want to put your video at the same time. And I kind of want to get this done today. It's, it's about eight o'clock in the morning. So I want to really crack on, finish it all today as best I can. It's Christmas Eve, actually, believe it or not. It's Christmas Eve of me. So this video, you'll probably be seeing on Boxing Day or after thereabouts. Probably going to be a bit too busy to edit this up. But have a merry one, and I hope you have had a merry one. So I'm going to be wanting to use the car, of course, because it's traditional in and around Christmas to be driving around visiting people. And this way, I get to use a radio that actually works. Right, so that's the Wi-Fi. And that's the GPS hooked up, just as if you'd normally do that. And for the GPS, I'm probably going to lock that somewhere underneath the plastic trim of the dash. I think that will work. So let's hook up the uh, cables for power, if I recall. In fact, let me just check the power on my... There we go. I like to check the power on my unit isn't pumping out a billion volts, because that would be a bit dicey for me. Just going to check the wires on the back. Yes, indeedy. You'll need power till there. We'll need a ground to there. That's the accessory, that's the thing. And then this will be the power. So that's effectively what you'll have in the car. because so you'll have your permanent power and then you'll have your accessory switched power. Hopefully I won't have to do any of this because it'll all just work like magic because that'll be coming in off the standard wiring loom. And what I'm going to do is, before we get started, try to turn this up a bit. Right, hold it there, let's turn it on. Nothing's blown up, that's good. Power. Here we go. So I'm presuming this probably won't be on all the time because it won't have to necessarily reboot every time because it'll be kind of on in standby, just again, like your tablet or your phone. Eris is in. Eris in. in, 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 in. Your make of quality there. So I've just put a couple of cans here. You might have seen that, just sort of purchase, perching. It's all perched, purchased. So it's firing up. And there we go. So just uh, just as a sort of pre-warning, I have had it out of the box, of course, and I, a while back, and I've put it all back in. When I had it out of the box, um, I did play with the software, but I have to admit, the software as it came was pretty darn good. It came with iGo Maps, and that's what's installed on the card, and I've still got that. But I've had a little play with it. That's why it's got a uh, Wi-Fi signal here, pretty low one. Um, but then when I hit the Maps button, it'll bring up Google Maps. And I'm just going to put my hand over it because it might go to my address. And I know it's, if you ask me for my address, I'll probably give it to you. But let's just check on that one. Uh, yep, it kind of does. But I can assure you, I'm going to zoom out a bit on it. It does work reasonably well. So there you go. And I don't live in Belgium. It's a little bit jerky at the moment, and I think the reason is when you do the fresh boot, as soon as it sort of loads up, it does seem to be running some stuff in the background. So you can see it's not running particularly smoothly, but it did get better. It does get better. Um, your mileage may vary on that one, but absolutely fine. So you've got here your uh, iGo maps. That's what came pre-installed. You've got your AV in. So if you've got the external AV, like your reverse camera, That'll be hooked up on there. You've also got your DVR, so if your digital video recorders, so if your front camera is plugged in. And what's great is if you don't like the apps that do certain things, you can just bin them. 
totally bin them. So I've got that DVB tuner. I just downloaded that off the web because you've got here, if you go in through the menus, you can find um, pretty um, quickly, he says, searching there's your Play Store. So you've got your Play Store right there. You've got your information, your GPS info. So you can see how many GPS satellites you've got locked in. It does actually work in the back office. I know it doesn't at the minute because I've just thrown the antenna down at a weird angle down there. But that does actually work pretty well. So um, just a quick one though. So you've got car buttons here, a bit like a Tesla. It looks like a picture of a car. Just all your simple car stuff. So I've put on Google search, navigation, radio, which is just normal FM radio. Again, works in the normal FM radio -y way, but then all these presets work. By the way, when you're in FM radio mode, it's kind of neat because all of these, see there? Your radio is still on. In fact, I'm not really sure how you turn your radio off. Mm -hmm. Something I'll discover when it's fit in the car, really, when you get used to it. Um, yeah, the presets aren't working there, so I guess that means radio on and radio off. Or when you click that, it goes off. Who knows? Um, this gives you your full Android application menu, so you can just pull your bits out of here, your widgets. This does support CAN bus, so this will work with the vehicle's CAN bus. You can see it's got wheel key installed, so that lets you set, though you can't see it now, you see volume plus, minus, so when it lets you push the buttons on the steering wheels to do certain things. Not sure um, if you can do more than that, that'll be interesting to find out because it would be cool to assign more, more sort of hotkeys to those things. Again, sorry for the reflection on the screen, if there is one. Uh, you've got your adjust volume control, that's operated also by the knob. If you push the knob in, it goes to mute, which is nice. Um, also, you've got a graphics equaliser, so if you play, play with the radio knob but push it in, you've got the different equalisers here. But if you hit there, you can actually see what it's doing when you're pushing it. See, there's all your different modes. Um, for most people, you'll just want that flat though, really. But look at this fader control, which is quite cute. It's a bit like what you've got Tesla have got now. There's a bit more glammed up, but it's no different really. And it works quite well. The response is pretty cool. Look at that, nice and quick. Um, click all, resets it all. Any other interesting features I can show you? Installed my Audible, got my Bluetooth set up really easily, regular music player. Then over to the second menu, which I think these are the ones you're going to want all the time. So I've made this the main one. And then on the side, you've just got some extra stuff. I couldn't install Android Auto on this yet. So I don't know if there's a build for this. So I've got to find out why not. If you've got all your external cameras and reverse and stuff like that all hooked up, it should work. So when you put the car in reverse, it will show you a reverse camera. And the reason I know that is if you go to settings you'll find a menu here, a very car specific. Oh, by the way, there's something called element here. I'll try to show you what that does. If I put element on, that's for setting the colors that come on when you're in night mode. That's why you can't see them because it wasn't in night mode, but you've got RGB, you can set them to match exactly your interior, which is it's always welcome to be able to do that. And what else have you got? There's some interesting things here. Uh, settings specifically to do with navigating and driving and what apps come up. So when you hit this button, this navigation app, for example, I've gone here and I've told it to actually bring up, instead of the iGo as standard, actually to bring up Google Maps. But you can get this button to bring up whatever you want. In fact, there was a double press. Press it once, press it twice. Maybe if I press it twice first. Or is it a hold? Long hold. Let's try that. Uh, Maybe I'm going mad. There's definitely some other functionality I want to say on that. Not sure how you bring it up. Maybe if you're in another application, you do a long hold. It was doing something interesting. It may well be because remember in um, Android, you've got the effect of this button here, which is the one which shows you your different apps running. Maybe that was switching between apps before when I was playing with it. Um, I need a bit more of a fiddle, but it would be nice to reconfigure some of these buttons more. So I'm going to check one day. There might be a, a bit more of a detailed firmware on that. Again, phone works pretty good. I'm not going to really push it and bring it up because you'll see all my contacts, but you can sync the contacts in the usual way, radio band and the usual stuff. So I think that's about it wrapped up. You can see it's 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 kind of going to be an easy, not easy job, depending on your car and how much stuff you want to hook up. If you want to hook up all the ancillaries, you know, all these wires, then that's great. Uh, it's going to take you a bit more time. <laughs> I just slung down the wires on the power. That's why that's gone out. I haven't blown it up. So the only thing I'm going to do, though, in this, I said I'm not going to hook everything up. But what I might just do, I've got some of these AV wires and you'll have some of these lying around, you know, Probably these three-way ones are probably more useful. 
just um, so that I can get some of these that give video in and out and pull them to a different place and so maybe somewhere more maybe easier for me to get to in the future right now so if I want to test out a reversing camera I can and I do Woohoo! there we go I actually do have a a Chuan Grand ho, 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 reversing camera which is that little doodad and this little doodad by the way has the lines you know the uh, lines on the back the distance lines but looking again in this software apparently the software also has distance lines so you can decide and, and sort of flipping so you can decide whether you want to use a plain camera or use one of these fancy ones which has the overlay so you can choose either way fortunately for me this camera if you recall in an earlier video it has these jumper wires which i've actually cut because i was testing them um, one of those flips the image and one of those draws the overlay so you can turn them on and off and depending on which one you like better also I notice that it does come with quite a long cable so that's probably one that I'll fit if I can if I may while I'm fitting all those other bundles of wires through the through the car uh, not fancying that at all I have to take seats out everything so yeah that's going to be me I'm going to try that today as I said, I probably won't video it because it's going to be really tedious for me and it's Christmas Eve, I need to get it finished. But uh, I will try to, you know, show you what I've done at the end, at least the end result and if there's anything interesting along the way. But to be honest with you, I know a lot of you like to watch me uh, do the actual pulling apart stuff. It's hard to record that while you're doing it. But I think if you're going to try attempting this sort of thing yourself, you kind of need to know what you're, you're going to get yourself into it and I think that you're pretty much you you know if you've done this sort of thing before you know that you're gonna have to pull off a lot of trim off your car and you can get loads of videos on the internet about your specific trim level and how you pull all those panels off and how you pull the radio how you pull the dashboard up but on the simplest case if you buy one of these and that Ursin or whatever it's called you'll find uh, it's quite a common brand they do factory fit modules for so many different cars that you can just pull out your standard head unit and buy one of those and you can see they're shaped for specific vehicles again this is probably I'm not sure if this is quite right for mine because it's a bit of a weird crossover year but I think this will fit but for yours if you've got like I don't know Mazda or Ford or something it'll just literally drop straight in and then you'll have all of that Androidy tablet goodness certainly could be a big benefit to you two thousand years later right I'm back it has literally been 11 hours that's 11 hours non-stop I swear I, I stopped for like two minutes just to grab like a tea or the odd cookie as I was walking past but I thought I'd share with you what actually came out of the car I'll, I'll I'll try to it's dark outside but I'll do a quick video just to show you the the unit I won't go through it all but just show you how it looks fitted bear in mind I had to rip apart a lot of the car to get it in because this car is very awkward BMW type cars very awkward but I'll show you what came out of it so this was the original navigation head unit and it's got a tape player that when you press eject it opens and you can put a tape in and you can see it's an odd looking beast isn't it it's an odd looking uh, shape it does say Land Rover on it was BMW Land Rover you know same sort of thing at that time made by Alpine and it's got weird connectors hence having to run all those cables to the back so that's what I've replaced however it doesn't end there so if you uh, bear with me I'm just going to heft up some stuff so we'll put this to one side because of course in the boot you'll recognize this and this is the actual radio receiver that goes with that so that had a big cable that goes to the boot and you'll recognize this harness from the new radio that we just replaced but say this is living in the boot not living in the front of the car but it's just like a normal radio but without a panel and I've messed with that before you've seen me videos on that so I'll just put that there you know so that's there now oh yeah by the way while I, I removed this CD multi changer I didn't need that and uh, I found three CDs in that too so I've kept those because the new unit does have a DVD player and of course you can play CDs and that that's also an Alpine unit this is expensive gear I don't know how much it would have cost but this is the difference say between buying a, an HSE Range Rover and a Vogue you know the difference between 40 grand and 100 grand and sort of thing you know all these add up and then also of course I removed this because this is the CD DVD based GPS navigation system that I didn't need anymore because of course Android has Google Maps and that unit has iGo and everything built in with all the maps so let's see we've got one two three four different things I've uh, taken out 
Oh yeah, there is just one more thing, of course, and that's the big amplifier here. We don't need the uh, amplifier here because that radio, of course, has adequate amplification. I do have the amp from Jan Beta, but I haven't fitted it at this point because I kind of fit it with this old system and then removed it. And uh, I don't have the need to fit it just yet because frankly, it's running all the speakers more than adequately. So I think it's doing about 45 or 50 watts per channel. Seems to be okay, to be honest with you, right now. So there you go, that's quite a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, let's not forget the TV tuner, of course. We did have a TV tuner and that operates any cameras you have as well. So we've got a whole load of equipment there we don't need. Of course, we don't need the TV tuner because I've got DVB in that unit. Not that I'm really going to watch TV in it. I'm actually busy copying some cartoons onto a card. Um, very hard actually, you know, rip from your DVD to your card, get it all working. Kids are happy in the back. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six things. And I swear, when you put them all together, they weigh a lot. This thing is a ton. All of this is mental, mental chicken oriental. So what we're going to do very briefly, I'm going to go outside and um, we'll have a look at the car and you could just a quick play. It's very dark. I've had to put the car on the charger actually because when you run these sort of cars on uh, any length of time, the battery does tend to run down. And look, just to show you, I've got all of these various AV stuff I've kind of hooked up. Some of them I'm not decided yet where it's gonna go. So I've just kind of terminated a bunch of stuff in the glove box, but I think that's gonna work. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna hook onto one of these USBs. Oh, it's got dark again. Pen drive containing a few videos because I want to see if it picks that up. I'll shut all that for now. We don't need to see it. And I know it's very dark. I do apologize over how dark it is. I, I will just get up and sh turn on some lights. How do we do that here? Here we go. There we go. Brilliant. Now, again, apologize for the uh, darkness, but um, it did get very dark outside. I'm not even sure I can show you this, but you've got the panel up here. I've even integrated the microphone and it's, I know the camera's gonna have struggle trying to focus even on this, but there's a, a microphone panel, um, sort of a grill aperture here, and I've got a very hidden microphone. I've done a really bloody good job of that. And there, hopefully, the radio will come on because I've just turned the car on. Power, and there you go. Tell you what, let me go get a light. Ha! Let there be light, and there is some. Pretty bright light, actually almost too bright, but uh, bear with me on this. I think I can turn that down a touch. There we go, that's enough. Now I'll just turn the lights on the car, because that way you'll see the lights on the unit come on and they match the greenness. It's all good. Um, I went into the options to set that. There's another mode for the lights, which is sort of a color cycling, which is pretty crazy. But there you go, look, the, that's your volume. And if I push radio, Hooray! Whoa! No, no, we don't want Jack FM. Just to show you. The steering wheel controls work absolutely flawlessly. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I did put a USB device in. Let's see if it picks up the video. Let's see if we get any video. Come on, please. Let's see. Let's see. Come on, come on. It's thinking about it, isn't it? It certainly appears to be thinking about it. Just put that down there. Let's see if we can hit play. Nothing. Not quite, oh, hang on, USB. There we go. Maybe it'll, ah, there we go. I just didn't select the right thing. And now I can watch Adventure Time. Oh yeah. Cube. Look how sharp the screen is. That's a pretty good high res panel. Very nice indeed. So there's my um, video. We've got my Google Maps. You've already seen that inside. Radio works great. TV actually works pretty good. A little bit choppy, but I think that's the USB stick I just happen to be using. DVR, we're not going to see much from that because it's night. Um, fact, what are we looking at here? Oh, we're looking, we've seen a reflection. <laughs> we're seeing an internal reflection on that of the actual uh, dashboard. Strange. That's just of the glass. Reverse camera I can't show you because there's one more lead I need to hook up. But yeah, it just, it does work. Trust me on that one. It just, it just works. I'm very pleased. Um, 
in fact if i play a dvd because there happened to be one in there like i said from um earlier and how i do that i just go dvd there from the menu um and it says this ursin easy rising amusement in your journey so that's it's kind of that's the brand if you're looking for roms and files and firmwares Ur ursin that's what it is lovely isn't it lovely now turn that down a bit because i don't want the youtube's uh spam detector but look at this just to show you the old fader i know actually how, how are you even going to hear that i don't even know if you're going to hear that but all that works basically all of these uh different profiles it's all good it's all good in the hood i'm very pleased right can i go back inside now yes i think i can that's flat just going to check one last thing though before they've got my audible on there um, yeah, I did check my, just to let you know, I did check my emails and stuff on there and that worked fine. And also you can actually set on it, in fact, let me mute that, there's a mute. Um, you can actually set it to say how long it stays on when you turn your car off, which is handy. So you don't want it to go off right away because if you just turn your car off for a minute and then turn it back on, you know, and you just do it quickly, then it'll have to reboot. So you can set that so it doesn't have to do that every time. So that's pretty awesome. Um, again, I managed to get it into this very awkward thing. It's not quite the right shape, but I managed to cut in that bezel and Look at that, doesn't that look handsome? Good job. Right, let's go in and wrap this up. So there you have it, that was my Christmas Eve project. Uh, there's certainly better things I could have been doing on Christmas Eve, like spending time with my kids and preparing uh, for Christmas with my wife, but unfortunately this took precedence, of course, and you take precedence, so that's why this video is being made. And I'm gonna go now and spend a couple hours probably putting this video together so you can watch it. I do hope you're enjoying your Brussels sprouts. I do hope uh, you've uh, enjoyed this video. I know I've skipped a lot and you haven't seen all the nitty gritty of doing it, all I can say is it's not for the faint hearted and I had to cut um, cut bezels and things to fit the radio unit in. I've had to rip up carpets and wiring channels and I've had to splice in and solder. But, you know, in the end, it's quite a nice system. It's fully kitted out. It's got the reverse cameras, front facing DVB um, digital recording camera. It's got the sat nav. It's got the digital TV. It's got the DVD. It's got the AV out to the units in the back. It's got the AV in if you want to play some video games. In fact, I think it's two AV ins. Um, so it's pretty much everything you can possibly do with a radio. Oh, and it even works with the steering wheel control. The CAN bus stuff just works perfectly. I picked that up. That surprised me. I didn't even have to set anything. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. And I reckon if you're going to do this yourself, I would allow at least two days. And I don't want to blow my own trumpet. I could do it in a day because I am bloody good at vehicle uh, <laughs> wiring. Trust me, I am. So there we go. Again, season's greetings. Merry Christmas to you all. And all the best for the new year. See you soon. Bye-bye.